Hey guys, and welcome to a very exciting today, a day, <laughs> today I released Sync Assistant uh, script slash plugin to the public. Very excited, been working on it for about half a year now on and off. And uh, it's just been kind of like a pet project that, uh, you know, I think is, uh, I've raised it good enough to where I can really sound to the world. So very excited. Uh, thank you to those of you who chose to support me. Um, and, and purchase the, the script slash plugin. Uh, I do appreciate it. It helps me pay off like my college loans and stuff. So, um, you know, I can't thank you guys enough. So hopefully this is, um, it lives up to the hype and you feel like it, uh, it is adequately priced for the amount of uh, ease it brings into your workflow. So yeah, that's enough babbling. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a quick installation and first use of uh, sync assistant script slash plugin and um, yeah without any further ado let's get into it so uh, after purchasing you should receive a download uh, and a license code uh, this is the download right here um, and it will come in a zip file and what you want to do is uh, download the zip file and put it somewhere where you can easily access it um, like your desktop or in this case I've just made an empty folder called tutorial and placed it in there and what you want to do is right click on that and click extract all. Um, if you're on Mac, uh, I'm pretty sure you can just open it and drag the contents of the zip file to somewhere accessible or there's some equivalent to extracting. Never used a Mac before, so this will be very much a Windows tutorial. I assume Mac won't be too different though, so I apologize. I just don't have a Mac to do any tutorial on that. So if you own a Mac and want to do a tutorial, by all means, go for it um, and send it my way. Anyways, Let's just go ahead and extract that and it'll place a new folder in the same directory. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, delete uh, or just close the other uh, window right there and just focus on the extracted files here. So as you can see, there is a readme. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and just follow it uh, just to show you how easy it is. Um, so this is a little bit different from most script installations. There is an extra step uh, that I will get into here in just a second. Um, but anyways, uh, you can uh, view, well, this is a little bit meta, right? Uh, this will be a link to this video right here. So if you come, if you came from the readme, hello. Um, and the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and close After Effects. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, there is an extra step in this that does require After Effects to be closed and restarted. Um, so just go ahead and do that. And then uh, what you wanna do is go to your, um, go to uh, this folder right here. Uh, it should be under Program Files uh, and Adobe. And once you're in here, I'll open up the folder that corresponds to the version of After Effects you want to install uh, Sync Assistant to. So I'm using After Effects uh, 2014. If you're using 2017, you can open that one up. Uh, under Support Files, you want to go there. And then uh, what you want to do is find your, um, your preset effects.xml. So I'm going to go ahead and type in pre, uh, preset effects and it'll go ahead and highlight it here. Should be about uh, towards the bottom of this folder. And what you want to do is open that with notepad or your favorite text editor. So if you want to go here and uh, click open with, uh, you can go ahead and select uh, notepad from that list. I'm going to use notepad just so uh, I'm using what you guys will be using uh, for the sake of consistency. And there's a lot of junk in here. Uh, you can go ahead and ignore all of it. What you wanna do is go down to the very, very bottom here. And right before this closing, uh, oops, right before this last little uh, effects uh, tag happens, uh, you want to uh, create a new line right here. So we have a new line right before that final effects tag. Um, and right above that, you want to copy all this stuff from your readme file. Um, from the beginning where it has effect match name sync assistant underscore v1 all the way down to where it closes with slash effects right here what you want to do is simply copy it and then paste it right in there don't have to worry about formatting it should be all good and uh, once you've pasted it all in that looks a-ok -okay to me make sure that you do have this final closing uh, slash effects still at the bottom of the file um, and go ahead and click file and save and that uh, you are now done with that portion of the installation. And now all that's left is to select both your Sync Assistant uh, v1 JSX bin and the Sync Assistant underscore data folder, both of them. Make sure you select both of them and open up the scripts folder inside of support files and then go to script UI panels. And then all you have to do now is just go ahead and drag um, 
uh, those uh, two uh, drag the JSX bin as well as the folder into um, Oop, looks like it since I already have it installed it'll ask me to overwrite it I'll just go ahead and click overwrite on all these guys um, and go ahead and go ahead and overwrite it and there you go um, you should have sync system fully installed now and you are good to rumble um, so yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much everything right there and um, you go ahead and close these folders you are now done installing and what I'm gonna do now here is just open up After Effects now, real quick, I'm just going to talk about uh, what Sync System is. <laughs> if you didn't see the promo, uh, I tried to do my best to explain it uh, in the in the in the promo visually. But uh, basically, uh, I found that through motion designing, there's not really a whole lot of tools out there to help uh, people synchronize their animations to to beats or other musical slash sound effect cues. Um, so Sync Assistant is kind of my aim to help make uh, syncing easier for motion designers, whether it be um, lining up uh, effect pulses to the beat or, you know, um, uh, what I've also done is you can convert stuff like scale, which normally you can keyframe the value of, like, no, I want it to be 10% and then go up to 100%. Well, I've uh, added a functionality in Sync Assistant where you can convert that to, well, what if I want to keyframe the speed of the scale as opposed to just putting in the value? What if I want the speed of the scale to be increasing at 1% every second and then I want it to bump up to 10% uh, every second and then back down on the beat? You know, you can start keyframing the speed as well. Um, so I've gone ahead and added um, some very uh, interesting tools that people might need for syncing into this script in hopes that it will um, go ahead and help out with that. So I'm going to go ahead and close Sync Assistant so I can show you how to open it for the first time here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this over. My layout gets a little bit messed up sometimes, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that here. Uh, go ahead and create an open space for Sync Assistant. It's very, very small. Um, it doesn't require a whole too lot of space, but it does need a little bit of space to reside in your, in your um, layout here. So I'm going to go up to Window and open up Sync Assistant. And there you go. It's that easy. Sync Assistant opens up. If you're opening it for the first time, it will ask you for your license code. Just go ahead and find your download email and you'll have your own personalized license code in there for you to use. Um, and you go ahead and paste that in. You should uh, have Sync Assistant uh, within a few moments after, you know, it uh, checks the license file and all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, how do you use it? There's four buttons here. Uh, one of them is help button. So technically three buttons because this help button will just bring you to this tutorial. Um, so how, what do these three buttons do? Well, the first one, um, it will uh, link your animation to the beat. Uh, this one converts your keyframes into speed values and then links it to the beat. And then this one will go ahead and remove a uh, sync assistant from your layer. Uh, all very simple, uh, what you would expect. and. Uh, I guess the point of it is, is things don't have to be complicated. Um, and I'll go ahead and show that in a second. So let's go ahead and do our first thing with Sync Assistant here. Sync Assistant, um, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second, and I'll make it about 10, 10 seconds right there. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and import a song and then go ahead and mark the beat on it. All right, so I've got this song here. Um, it's the same one as I used in the promo. It's called, uh, it's by Sex Whales and Divinity. It's called Hailstorm, quite the name, I do agree. Um, but what I'm gonna do here is you can either put markers on this layer, I'm gonna press L twice uh, to open up the waveform. Uh, what you can go ahead and do is put the, uh, the markers straight on this audio layer, or you could do what I like to do and um, actually create a new null object uh, and name it Beats and put the markers on that layer. Just as long as you have a layer with the markers on it, you're good to go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and follow a previous tutorial that I did on marking the beats uh, using markers. And I'm gonna go ahead through and just do that very quickly. Uh, it doesn't take too long and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've gone ahead and marked out the beat on this null object and um, let's go ahead and create a layer that we want to sync to the beat. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid here. I'm going to create and make it white, create the same size as the comp and go ahead and click OK here and it's going to drop us in a nice little solid. And um, now all that's left is to just animate what we want to happen on the beat. That simple. So I'm going to go ahead and what I wanted to do is I want the opacity 
to flash from let's say 10% and bump it up to a, a full 100 and then back down to 10% every time the beat hits. So I'm going to go ahead and click T to bring up opacity and I'm just going to keyframe it. Um, so a good thing uh, or a very important thing to keep in mind with Sync Assistant is that the first and last keyframe uh, of your synced animation always need to be the same. Otherwise, uh, it will jump every time it reaches a new marker because it will end up at the last value and then instantly jump to the first value. Um, so you do want to make sure that the first and last keyframes of your base animation are of, you know, the same, the same value. So I'm going to start off uh, at 10% here. And uh, I'm going to go forward, let's say, one, two, three frames. And then let's go up to 100 because we want it to go boom. Uh, you know, explosive, go up to 100 and then kind of fade out on each beat. So I'm going to go forward probably like 60 frames, something like that, for it to slowly diffuse back down to 10%. Um, go back to 10 here. So you do notice that the first, um, first keyframe right here is 10%, and the last keyframe right here is uh, also 10%. Uh, now, what you want to do here probably is uh, ease it a little bit, so I'm going to go up to the graph editor and view our graph here. Okay, that looks good. Um, so you probably want to go and ease it. I'm going to leave it linear for now just to show that even after you apply Sync Assistant, you can still continue to edit and tweak your base animation to make things look really nice. Um, so I'm going to leave it linear uh, just, to, just to show the fact that you can continue to mess around with things um, after applying Sync Assistant. Um, so I'm going to close our graph editor here. And to apply Sync Assistant and link it to the beat, it's very simple. All you do is click on the, the value that uh, you have animated and you want to link. And go up here and click on the uh, link value button right here. I like to use the term regressive. Um, just That's just the technical term that <laughs> I've, I've used for this button. Um, because it keeps it as a value. And this one uh, I call the integrated button, uh, which converts it to a speed value and then links it to the beat. Uh, this one's a little bit more advanced. I'll get to that one in the next tutorial. Oh, and I went ahead and clicked it. That's lovely. Uh, so let's just take this chance to demo the unlink button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on opacity and click the unlink button and you'll see it returns it back to that state before we applied Sync Assistant. Um, did not mean for that to happen, but that kind of worked out nicely. Um, so let's go ahead and click the regressive, AKA value link to, be link to beat button. Um, and that will go ahead and apply Sync Assistant and link it to the beat. Um, but wait, we scrub through and there are markers here, but it's not it's not animating to the beat. What's going on? Well, when you apply Sync Assistant, uh, you may have multiple layers with markers on them. And Sync Assistant doesn't really know which uh, markers to look at, which layer to look at for the markers. So as you can see in the effect controls here, it's added the Sync Assistant plugin and it's named opacity just to keep things organized if you animate multiple things on a single layer. Um, and you want to scroll down to input, uh, open, uh, twirl that down and go to the marker layer and go ahead and sele uh, select the, uh, the layer in which you have the markers you want to sync to. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the beats here. And as if we ran preview, All right, so as you can see, it is now linked to the markers. Now that we've selected the correct layer. Um, but it's also very linear and <laughs> kind of disgusting looking to be frank. Um, so let's go ahead and demo that uh, you can continue to tweak it even, even after you've applied Sync Assistant to the effect. So as you can see, our keyframes are gone from the opacity layer and that's because it's been replaced by a link to the Sync Assistant uh, uh, plugin. So, what you want to do uh, to edit it is to go ahead uh, and either double click the base animation property in your effect controls under Sync Assistant, or you can actually go ahead and select your layer and press a U on your keyboard to bring up all your keyframes, uh, the base animation being one of them. Um, and that, as you can see, these are the keyframes that we originally put on the op opacity uh, parameter. Um, and now they've been moved into Sync Assistant. Um, and what you what you can do is just pull up the graph editor and tweak them. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button right here to go ahead and center it on our graph. And um, you could you may be in the speed graph view, which will make things look very very different. Um, but I'm going to go over here to the value graph um, and pull that up because we we do want to be or 
I guess this is personal preference, but I do prefer using the value graph to ease my keyframes. Uh, you can also use motion V2 um, to go ahead and do the easing. So I'll do 100% ease in, and this guy I'll do probably uh, probably like uh, 20 um, like that, and then go ahead and pull this one out. So as you can see, when I, whenever it hits the beat, it'll go boom, or actually nothing happens when I scrub over this because it is linked to the markers and there is no marker here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and trust that this is, is good. This shape is good because I've done it a million times before. Of course, if you have no experience using the graph editor, uh, I recommend playing around with it. I believe I do have a video on graph editing um, on my channel. Um, so as you can see on the beat, we now have that and it has this nice smooth easing. So it is compatible with motion V2 and any type of easing that you do prefer. Um, so let's go ahead and ramp preview this once more. All right, so there you go. It is now linked to the beat and that is basically it. And if you want to keep uh, syncing different things, you can pull up different parameters like scale or rotation and, and stuff. And you can just keep linking stuff. And now that you've animated the beat or you've marked the beat once, you can just continue to use those markers and make life a breeze as you continue to sync different elements to the beat. Um, so that's pretty much a quick start. I will be going over how to uh, use the second button, which converts your keyframes into speed and then links it um, in the next tutorial. Um, and that's pretty much that. So hopefully uh, this tutorial on how to use Sing Assistant is useful for you. And um, with that, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.